Welcome back. Let's assume you use some or all of our Agile PM plugins supported by your core fundamental project management skills to build a best of breed business case. Well done. You've got your sponsor board in, your key stakeholders all agree what's in the business case, your scope, your benefits, your costs, your quality, risks, etc. all nailed. You're set up for success. Part of that business case will either be if you're waterfall, um, a Gantt chart, Microsoft project sort of schedule, or if you're an agile person, you'll have epics, features, and a user story backlog. You've now got the, the bones of an execution plan. But there's one last vital and super important step. You have to build a team, get the right people in that team, and then assign those people to those tasks in the Gantt chart or to user stories in your backlog. In other words, you're now facing into how do you build teams? How do you keep people motivated? How do you deal with folks who aren't performing as well as they can? How do you help folks when they're in a crisis? You're into the whole issue around people and team management. Years ago, I wrote a book, 1980 actually, called People and Project Management. And since then, I've continued to run with my partner, Camille, uh, team workshops which help project managers understand the dynamics and so on of team. I'm not an expert. Um, I've read extensively. I've spoken with literally thousands of people around issues around teams. What I'm going to share with you in this series of tutorials is some key really useful things that I've learned about people and teams. Before I do that, I'm going to just take a slight detour about two concepts. One of them, which still drives me absolutely crazy, is the term soft, that people, whenever they start talking about people issues, call them the soft issues in project management. A friend of mine, years ago in a conference we ran together in San Francisco, once said, the only people who call people issues and people challenges soft are the folks who never actually had to face into them. You know, I know, relationships are much more complex than doing a risk assessment. So people issues are not soft. They are really hard and really critical. The second comes from a mentor of mine guy called Professor Jerry Weinberg, brilliant man. And he used to say to me, Rob, there are three causes of every problem. People, people, people. Great people management, great team management is not about telling people what to do and ordering them to do stuff, but it's about the much more subtle things such as influencing people. Remember, you're working with incredibly creative people in project worlds. And I've said many times, if you really upset a creative person, they have infinitely creative ways of getting payback. So you can't order teams to do stuff like we used to do in the old days. You've got to look at how you influence teams. And when you start looking at influencing, you also have to look at another component of this equation, which is the power sources you have. So you've got power as a set of batteries and you've got influence styles as how you use that power. And in this tutorial, we're going to look at the power side of the equation. Next tutorial, we're going to look at the influence styles you can use. And in the final tutorial, we're going to look at some key vital things that I've learned about teams and a couple of tips on how to build teams quickly. Let's explore the concept of power. The most influential, the most transformative book I ever read about power, totally changed the way I thought about it, was from a person called John Kenneth Galbraith, a very famous economist and also uh, a presidential economic advisor to a number of US presidents. So he'd seen power being exercised from the White House. So I guess he'd learned about power from the source. The book was called Anatomy of Power, very hard to get nowadays, but in that book, Galbraith argued there are three different types or three different forms of power. The first is condign power. This is the power that comes out of the barrel of the gun, comes out of strict 
rigorous enforcement of law and regulation. It comes from the ability to actually stop people, to limit their freedom, for example. Most of you will be familiar with this, you've associated with authoritarian governments, dictatorships, etc. However, in a, even in a democracy, some organisations, border force, the police, etc., have elements of condign power. Bad news is PMs don't have access to that. Probably good news if you think about it. So that's the condign. The next is compensatory and all PMs, all of you watching this tutorial will understand this. This is the power of hierarchy. Simply the more senior you are, the more power you have. It's that simple. The more money you have, the more power you have. That is what's called compensatory power. And again, PMs today have very little access to that. When I started in project management in the 70s, not only was the project manager of the team, I was also the boss of the team. So I had compensatory power. Those of you today who are in project management roles will rarely have that. You'll have groups of people who work for other people who have compensatory power on them, external consultants, external contractors who work for someone else. You certainly don't have any compensatory power over your stakeholders. So you've got to start rethinking how you think about power. And that leads us to Galbraith's third model which or concept, which was called condition power.